touch you anywhere in the world. We're running out of time. Last chance. Nicholas, Jeff in Las Vegas, good morning. Jeff, good to see you. You look like you're ready for a day in Vegas. Oh, I'm ready, of course. You know, <laughs> thank you for talking to me about Crisis. What a, an excellent drama, great thriller. And did you know that one of Las Vegas' own Tony Shea was an executive producer of the film? I did see that in the credits. I did. Yeah, excellent. He, one of my close friends. Yeah. He was, uh, he, he, you know, I'm a Las Vegas native and I lived near downtown for most of my life. And uh, yeah, he was, he was pretty incredible what he did for Las Vegas. Wonderful guy. Uh, yeah. Well, it's very nice to talk to you. So glad to be in Vegas. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks for uh, being on the show today. Uh, well, you know, Crisis is based on true events, but it's three stories going on at the same time. You've got the DEA cop story, academic research and big pharma, a mother's journey for answers, and they all connect in the movie eventually. Uh, from a director's perspective, that's a this is a complicated movie. So was it a challenge to kind of find a balance for this film? Absolutely. Well, you're a very um, astute watcher, so I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, listen, the opioid thing is a big topic, right? Um, and we'd seen other films had explored elements of the drug war like traffic, um, but no one had really focused in on opioids. And, you know, I learned about it through personal experience. I had friends got in trouble with the drug and, you know, some of them aren't with us anymore. Uh, so that's, I saw that kind of firsthand with them. <clears throat> As I started to look at it, I saw, God, this is multifaceted. You've got, you know, where Gary Oldman is in the storyline, these pharma companies and they're backed by billionaires with, you know, incredible technology and it can all be put to good use, but, you know, regulation. But if it isn't, you know, what happens if things fall through the cracks? And then that really comes down and manifests upon smugglers and illegal diversion. And then ultimately people, you know, like Evangeline Lilly's character who become uh, addicts, you know, maybe through no fault of their own, they get hurt on the job and they get a prescription broker. So I said, oh my goodness, you know, this is such a big topic. We got to give it the multi-plot treatment. I love those movies. We don't see them so much anymore. Um, even LA Confidential was like that. So um, it was very fun. I love actors. So the idea of having Gary Oldman, Michelle Rodriguez, um, you know, Greg Kinnear, all these people coming in, um, and being able to really situate them in these storylines uh, was tremendously exciting to me. Um, then, of course, the trick is, how do you tie it all together? And ultimately, you'll be the judge if I did my job as a dramatist or not. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we certainly endeavored to give you a thrilling ride. Uh, and, and, you know, when you're speaking about Gary Oldman's character, you know, he's, he's covering up, you know, the next generation of painkillers, big pharma. He becomes a whistleblower. And like in your movie and in real life during the Trump administration, why would anyone become a whistleblower? I mean, they're automatically, you know, it's they're there to protect us, the public, but they're eventually, you know, it's more grief than it is, you know, uh, you know, doing the better good. And for Oldman, it was all about self-respect. Totally understand that. But why would someone risk their life and career and family for being a whistleblower? Well, I think, you know, I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Bobby Kennedy who said, you know, evil is what happens when good people fail to act. Um, and so I like in this film, you know, in arbitrage, I had done my last movie with Richard Gere. I'd done this billionaire who was corrupt and he was trying to hold it all together as things fell apart. With this movie, I wanted to focus on uh, characters who were more relatable, more like the rest of us, you know, uh, people in everyday situations who got found themselves in an extraordinary position. So Gary here, he's working for a pharmaceutical company. He's kind of a almost a rubber stamp guy but he sees something, he sees an anomaly and he can't sleep at night. He can't let that go because he knows because it's his job as a scientist, as a researcher, and he's even a professor. So he teaches youth, you know, he understands if I don't speak, um, really it could filter down and hurt lots of people. This movie was very inspired by true stories. There was a wonderful woman uh, who was a, an FDA uh, official who interfered um, when the drug thalidomide was going to be brought to America, you know, and we don't have uh, the problems that they had in Europe with thalidomide to nearly the same extent, really, because she spoke up uh, and she put her reputation on the line, of course, was roundly criticized, but ultimately in history is remembered as someone who was very helpful to us. So I think the idea of regular people doing extraordinary things when called to circumstance uh, was something that was very exciting to me. This Wires. is the biggest public health crisis since tobacco. It's not our responsibility. Then whose is it? 
no one yells like Gary Oldman, do they? <laughs> I mean, he just, I love when he loses his temper and he shouts. He has that distinctive voice when he yells. This is the biggest public health crisis since tobacco. <laughs> yes, exactly right. I, you know, Army Hammer's character, uh, his sister struggling through addiction. I can identify with that. I've had friends and, and family who struggle with addiction. I think most people can identify with that part of the story tremendously. Listen, I think what uh, is true is that addiction doesn't discriminate. You know, we, we tend to think of the disenfranchised and the people's on the fringes of society, but opioids, it's your father, it's your brother, it's your sister, it's your coworker, um, because it's so innocuous. You can really get roped into it, get a prescription for some pain pills, you hurt your back on the job, all of a sudden you got a monkey on your back. You know, some people are okay, they can get past it. Some people, the way their body is built, um, they can't get past it. It becomes a terrible addictive cycle and then can lead to ultimately street, using street drugs. Um, so what we really wanted to look at was, you know, instead of quote unquote, blaming the addict, I think that's old. We're past that in American culture now. We understand this is a disease. This is a public health issue. And, you know, you wanna look for responsibility. Why don't we look at the labs where these things are created and see if the proper safeguards are in place. Um, let's look at our government organizations and ask if the proper safeguards are in place. And let's look at, the industry that enables and promotes perhaps uh, distribution of uh, dangerous substances that really should be more confined to circumstances that absolutely require them. I think my favorite character in the movie was the, the actor who played Mother, the Montreal Kingpin. Wonderful. I just found, I could see a whole movie just on him. Guy Nadon is a uh, national treasure in Quebec. I shot this movie up in Montreal because it was partially set there. Um, and it's also a wonderful place to film, but I did an extensive search because I thought there's never really been a crime saga uh, detailing uh, Montreal. And it's a wonderful city. It's a port city. You know, it's beautiful. It's got great industry. But at the same time, there's this criminal underworld. There's a transshipment point. Things come in and out. And so I needed a kind of uh, Canadian godfather, but with this French style, you know, so I would have curse words in French. I don't know if we can say them here, like putain or whatever. And he came and he said, no, 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 no. They wouldn't say that. They'd say tabarnak. And they have their whole, whole vernacular. Um, and he, he is a very alive behind the eyes, that guy. Um, you know, I see him in the tradition of uh, Ray Winstone or a Brando even. Um, he's just a wonderful actor. And this is his first American film, really. Uh, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to work with him again. Incredible cast, uh, message right on point, more relevant than ever. Uh, congratulations on a great film and uh, come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you sometime. Jeff, I'll be there and hopefully you'll show me around. Thank you.